Masks let you define a specific area in a clip that you want to blur, cover, highlight, apply effects, or color correct. Effects can be applied either inside or outside the masked area. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the powerful masking and tracking workflows from After Effects directly within Premiere Pro. We'll be making use of the Effects and Effect Controls panel, which are located under the Windows menu. I already have both panels open here. To demonstrate this concept, I will go into the Effects panel and add a Lumetri color effect to my clip. And under Basic Correction, I will do something extreme like increase the exposure and change the color temperature to make the effect very obvious. Under the Effect Controls panel, we can see our Lumetri color effect. By default, any video effect added to a clip will have these three masking options. The Ellipse Shape Tool, the Rectangle Shape Tool, and the Pen Tool. I'm going to click on the pen tool to show you how to freely draw complex mask shapes directly onto the clip in the program monitor. I'll draw my custom shape and connect it to complete the mask. You'll notice that the color effect is only visible and constrained within the mask area. Premiere Pro provides controls that let you adjust mask feathering and expansion directly in the program monitor. We can apply feathering to smooth the edges of our mask shape to help blend the mask into the area outside the selection. The Mask Feather Guide is displayed as a blue dashed line in the Program Monitor. Drag the Mask Feather handle away from the Feathering Guide to increase the feathering, or toward the Feathering Guide to decrease the feathering. You can also adjust the Mask Feather value in the Effects Control Panel. Mask Expansion lets you expand or contract the area of the mask. The Mask Expansion Guide is displayed as a blue solid line on the Program Monitor. Drag the mask expansion handle away from the expansion guide to expand the mask area or toward the expansion guide to contract the mask area. You can also specify a mask expansion value in the effects controls panel. Positive values move the borders outward and negative values move it inward. When you apply a mask to an object, Premiere Pro can automatically track the mask to follow the object as it moves from one frame to another. Let's select our mask in the Effects Controls panel and click the stopwatch icon next to the Mask Path control to activate keyframe animation. By clicking on the stopwatch, Premiere will add a keyframe to the frame you're currently on. In this case, I've drawn a mask around her red hood. With my mask selected, I can track the mask forward or backward. If I click on these tracking buttons, I can track my mask forward or backward one frame at a time. To track the entire clip in my sequence, I can click the play button and Premiere will automatically analyze the frame by frame movement of the object selected within the mask. Keyframes are automatically generated and added to every frame. To achieve the most effective results, you can click on the wrench icon to modify how masks are tracked. Mask tracking in Premiere Pro is faster when live preview is disabled. I'll now delete this effect to get back to where we started and demonstrate how to layer images. Notice that in the effect controls, those same three icons are already under opacity control. If I were to put a mask onto this clip from the opacity effect, you'll see that only the part of the image within the mask is visible. When I delete the mask, the whole image returns. A common way to use this effect is for split screens or compositing a clip onto another. For this example, I'll do something very visually obvious. Here I'll play the full original clip from the short film, where these two robbers are standing on each side of the door. Then both head in and are framed within one of the windows of the door, and then run out of the frame. What if I wanted to play with time, where we see the same two people already inside as they're also standing outside? I would do that by creating a mask to layer this clip on top of itself, but shift one of the clips to play with the timing. So step one will be to duplicate this clip. A quick and easy way to duplicate the clip is by holding the Alt Option key and then clicking and dragging the clip onto the track above. And as I let go, you'll see that it has duplicated the clip right on top of it. So let's say I really wanted to start this clip with the two of them already inside. I'll move the top clip so that that's where the shot begins and extend the tail to the end of the clip. With the top clip selected, I'm going to go to the Effect Controls panel. Under Opacity, 
I will click on the pen tool to freely draw a mask right around the window on the door. Now we can only see what's within the mask of the top clip. If I were to disable the bottom clip, we only see the part of the clip on V2 that was within the mask. So as I enable the bottom clip again, you'll see that this looks like the original shot where they're both inside and outside. Let's see what it looks like when I play it. It's as if the action just repeated itself. This effect could be used for retiming performances. For example, if I needed the robber on the left to move just a little faster, I could use these techniques to draw a mask around her and speed her timing up while leaving the other robber on the right moving at the original speed. This technique is often used on stationary shots where the camera is locked off. Now you'll see that even though the camera appears to be locked off, there was a subtle amount of movement that caused the camera to slightly shift. It's most noticeable on the border where the top clip ends. What was within the mask suddenly shifts position. One tip is to go back into the effect controls while the top clip is selected, and under blend modes, choose screen. That allows me to see through the top clip and adjust the position to align it with where it is on the bottom clip. Once it's lined up, switch back to normal mode. You can see that there is no longer an obvious position change when the top clip ends. This can be fine-tuned further by adding a small dissolve at the end of the top clip just to really help smooth out this effect. When I play this full screen and really look at where the effect was added, I can't see where I added that effect. It's seamless. You can play with the feathering tools under effect controls if needed. Now that you understand the basics of opacity masks, you can take your editing to the next level. The best part is you don't even have to leave Premiere to do it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Inside Hollywood's Cutting Rooms on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel for more Premiere Pro tutorials and cutting room conversations.